Um, thank you, Roager, um, not just for presenting the new results strategy, but also putting it in a historical context. It was very useful. I'm sure you have a lot of questions. I want you to keep those because we have one last speaker, and that's Magnus Karlqvist, who is from the Swedish International Development Cooperation Agency, SIDA. Uh, Magnus will speak on the plans for the implementation of this new uh, Swedish results strategy, um, maybe with a special focus on civil society. Maybe. 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 Welcome. <coughs> okay, thank you very much. I, I'd like to repeat what Roger said. It's nice to be here and meet some of, of uh, older friends. Um, I'm the third in the row, dressed in gray or blue or dark suit with a tie. It's a little contrary to our one of the main objectives in the in the strategy to to promote gender equality. We can so we can do better the next time. Dear colleagues, friends, women and gentlemen, thank you for inviting thank you for inviting me to make a contribution today at this important gathering. It is with great pleasure and pride I will try to elaborate on how SIDA initially has interpreted the new Swedish strategy, our mandate and how we perceive some of the major challenges. We have a mammoth task ahead of us. Sweden is increasing the support to Afghanistan, which makes us exceptional, and our taxpayers are investing close to five billion five billion Swedish kroner in Afghanistan the next five years. We have got a heavy responsibility, but the political consensus over the political party lines support us, supports us. And um, also just a few points for clarification. The, the strategy as such is exactly as Roger said earlier, it's what, what, we, should, what we shall do. Then it's up to SIDA, how to do it. So my uh, ultimate responsibility is the implementation of this strategy. Um, then of course we meet, the Ministry and SIDA, we meet at least two times a year formally and then we also have lots of informal contacts to, to report progress and results. So part of the point of departure is that it's within the mandate of SIDA to assess and decide on programs, partners, risks, etc. Um, from our point, the, um, our interpretation, or it's quoted actually from the strategy, is that the implementation of the strategy aims at contributing to a democratic, peaceful and sustainable sustainable development marked by a long-term economic growth which will benefit poor, poor people. And then, as, as uh, Roger rightly said, we have the five E's taken from the Tokyo framework. I will also elaborate a little and talk a little of where we are today on, on these five E's when it comes to financial commitments. For this year, when it comes to empowerment, we have more or less committed ourselves uh, up to 389 million kronor, 389. On education, we are at 163. On employment, 35. On enterprise, 1.5. Economic integration, 97. And then you must remember that this, this strategy was approved in June. So it's very natural that some of the, the older sectors or older areas, we had already established partnerships. And in, with, with these new areas, where I will revert to, we have, so to say, started. So those of you who are good in head counting, you came up to 687 million as, as, uh, as, a, as a total amount. This is, our, this is our forecast for 2014. So 
Uh, I can repeat it. Empowerment, 389. Education, 163. Employment, 35. Enterprise, 1.5. And economic integration, 97. I also would like to, to give you our forecasts for 2015. Uh, and that is a mix of agreed uh, contributions, planned in, uh, contributions and indicative uh, contributions. And these figures are quite interesting when I come back a little later to our budget situation. On empowerment, we, we have a figure of, for 2015, 443, 443. Education, 257. Employment, 45. Enterprise, 31. Economic integration, 62. That comes, the total figure is 837. Not agreed, not, 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 not decided, but that's our direction, so to say. Um, what we see, what is new in the strategy, uh, we, we first of all found out that we were quite quite right. I mean, some of these uh, ease were already, so to say, taken care of. But the new thing was the private sector development through employment, enterprise, and education. Secondly, there is clearly a, a, a more focus on rural areas. Um, thirdly, there is a broader, broader scope on education. And now I'm also talking about vocational training, as, although it's under another E, I know that. But uh, here, here, education, I said, vocational training is included, secondary education, and even higher education is mentioned in the, in the strategy. And explicitly expressed, there is no geographic focus. We are, so to say, tasked to develop a national program. And uh, my personal uh, view is that it's quite strong, that uh, it's, it's not so common that the, the, the ministry tells what not to do. But here they say there is no geographical focus. It's a national program. Now, civil society. <laughs> we expect civil society to play a role in all these areas, and not only in the first, empowerment, and second, education, um, where civil society organizations traditionally always are key players. Under empowerment, our strategy states that an independent civil society is important for the democratic and peaceful development of the country. It goes without saying. However, it is silent when it comes to Swedish comparative advantages. Currently, CEDA has agreements with this from the country, country body now. We have, we have agreements with three Swedish NGOs. The Swedish Committee for Afghanistan, of course, Save the Children, and Kvinna to Kvinna. Um, I see the Kvinna to Kvinna pro program as a po pilot project to find out what role a Swedish NGO with limited experience and network in Afghanistan can play. The justification for all organizations must be to work context-based through local organizations in Afghanistan. The Afghan uh, ownership must always be in focus and an exit strategy always part of our vision. My assessment is that the civil society clearly needs to be strengthened in Afghanistan. There is at the moment some turbulence around our support to some of the Afghan NGOs, and donors jointly are now looking into different ways, how to further live up to our goals, how to best support the civil society. Future, f future will tell how this be, will be organized. The embassy will continue to be active in support of coordinating civil society support in Kabul. Some challenges for the future. Firstly, 
Monitoring and follow-up is a huge challenge due to the security situation in general, limited security resources, have a national program. And my assessment is that when we are now, so to say, leaving the focus in north and uh, have the ambition to, to move to other uh, provinces and regions, this, will, uh, th this means that the, the costs will be higher and the risks are also increasing. Um, that is nothing that we, so to say, um, uh, that is something that we can accept. But we will uh, an analyze the risks and we will calculate the costs uh, from that point of departure. Secondly, the Swedish political profile and CEDAS demanding contribution man management system don't always go well together. <laughs> uh, I have never, um, I have a quite, quite, uh, quite long experience from working in conflict and post-conflict countries. But I've never met such a high political profile, which we have in, in Afghanistan, and also trying to, to get that into our boxes and templates and uh, whatever we have. And that is a challenge. And it, uh, uh, that also needs patience from, from our, from our uh, partners. Um, we are eagerly, that, that is number three, we are eagerly waiting for clarity on the country budget. Will the amount in the strategy, this four point or close to five billion Swedish kronor, will the amount in the strategy be affected by budget cuts in Sweden, temporarily or per permanently? And actually our new Minister for Development Cooperation visited SIDA at, at one o'clock this afternoon if I had expected some clarity on this point, I, 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 I'm disappointed, but I didn't had, have, any, have any high expectation of that. But that is an outstanding uh, question. I don't really know more than what's in the papers or in the news, but I, I don't think we can take for granted that we have this high level of um, uh, in the budget for 2015. I'm uh, pleased to be corrected on this. We have just started our operational planning for 2015 and beyond, 2016 and 17 as well. Uh, the, perhaps the most important element is to operationalize the strategy into implementation. Choice of actors has to be analyzed and justified and modes of collaboration clarified. The framework for monitoring and follow-up, which was developed during the strategy preparation process, has to be updated. On top of that, CEDA's Afghan unit has to elaborate on four general tasks. We must prioritize risk analyse analysis, both the different modalities and how the risks might, might affect the follow-up and the results of the contributions. We shall investigate the capacity at the embassy and the possibilities to monitor and follow up. We shall, we shall uh, also co analyze how bigger and longer contributions can create capacity to work with smaller but innovative and catal catalytic, catalytic, catalytic interventions. And we sh shall discuss and assess how a national program can be monitored what mechanisms have to be in place, and what are the risks. Specifically, we have to respond to the following issues. How to integrate gender equality and human rights, especially for women and girls, in all interventions. How a conflict-sensitive approach can be applied, and how to prevent corruption and elaborate on how the link between humanitarian interventions and long-term development programs be strengthened. And lastly, resilience and environment uh, or climate issues have to be linked in all rural development programs. That is quite a, a demanding task we have ahead of us. So we have understood what our tasks and responsibilities are. We are now organizing our two subunits, the one in Kabul and the one in Stockholm, 
so we can work as smart and efficient as possible and meet the expectations not only from our political establishment, but from our taxpayers, the Swedish civil society, and last but not at all least, the people of Afghanistan who deserves our support. I thank you.